It's been well over a year since we saw the first reasonable video doorbell with support for HomeKit Secure Video. Not one has hit the market since then, until now. Thanks to the new Wemo Smart Video Doorbell. The big question is though, was it worth the wait? Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks so much for joining me. My name is Shane. If you're new here and this channel is all about building an easy smart home using Apple's HomeKit with new videos published every Sunday. Now we finally have another option if you want a video doorbell that supports HomeKit Secure Video natively. There's a whole video about what HomeKit Secure Video is that I'll also link below. Essentially, it's Apple's service that allows you to securely record and store video footage from your security cameras in iCloud and access them on any of your Apple devices from anywhere. It does require a HomeKit hub being either a HomePod, HomePod mini, Apple TV, or an iPad, and it does also require an iCloud Plus plan, which you may or may not already have. The new Wemo video doorbell is very similar to the Logitech Circle View doorbell in many ways, so you'll likely see some comparisons between the two during this video here, as I've obviously been using them both for a while. They are really the only two products like this right now on the market. It's currently the end of January 2022 and the Wemo doorbell is expected to begin shipping in the next few weeks. The doorbell is currently only available in the US and Canada. Wemo was taking pre-orders but at the time of recording has actually stopped taking new orders because they've already sold out of their pre-order stock, but it should be available to order again very soon, if not already by the time you're watching this. Um, I'll put affiliate links down below where you can purchase one once they are available. Now, full disclosure, Wemo did send me the doorbell at no charge so I could test it out and share it with you here on the channel, but of course there are no strings attached and you're gonna get my honest thoughts and feedback as always. The doorbell has a four megapixel HD camera with 1200 by 1600 HDR video and a 178 degree field of view. It can connect to your 2.4 or 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi band and is designed to work with your home's existing wired doorbell system. It supports operating temperatures from negative four to 113 degrees Fahrenheit and 10% to 80% humidity. We'll talk more about that in a minute. This doorbell uses motion-based recording to save video clips to the iCloud, which can be viewed in the Home app, and those recordings do not count against your allotted iCloud storage. It works exclusively with HomeKit, which means you won't be using you know, the Wemo app or need any other subscriptions or registrations, just your iCloud account and the Home app that comes already installed on your iPhone. That also means it does not support 24 seven recording, again, only motion-based recording. So out of the box, we have the doorbell, the setup guide, the mounting plate, an angled bracket, the chime kit, mounting screws, they even give you a drill bit, which I don't think I've seen anyone do before, and you get a little torque screwdriver that you'll need for the security screw. You can see the camera lens here, there's a microphone, a status LED, and a light sensor here in the middle. There's a light bar right here, and the button itself, which also has an LED that lights up a little ring around the button so you can see it at night. There is a reset button on the back, as well as a micro USB port, which is just for troubleshooting. You'll probably never need to use that. Now there are two parts to the installation here. You have the chime kit and the doorbell itself. If you would rather not use the chime or you have like a digital chime, you can use the included chime bypass connector. I should mention that there is also an option to turn off your mechanical chime in HomeKit once you get it installed, if that's something you want. I'll show you that here in just a second. The bypass connector allows you to disconnect your doorbell chime from power while still powering the Wemo doorbell. And I gotta say this chime kit was much easier to install than the Logitech one. Not that the Logitech doorbell was, or the chime kit there was really hard. It just had many more wires and way more things that you could mess up if you didn't follow the you know the directions exactly right. It was a little harder to follow along, I guess. The Wemo was very, very easy and straightforward. Literally only had two wires you have to deal with. You connect them to the trans and the front wire terminals and either wire can be connected to either terminal. So it's super easy and 
you know, pretty hard to mess that up. Once the chime kit is installed, you can now install the doorbell, mark where your screws will go and drill some pilot holes if needed. Put on the angle bracket first if you need to use it. This will make your doorbell appear a little thicker, but it gives you that angled view, you know, if you need that at your location. Then attach the mounting bracket. Next, attach and tighten the wires to the terminal screws. Oh, and I guess I should say, always turn off the power at the breaker for safety before attempting any of this so you don't shock yourself. Once the wires are connected, just snap in your new video doorbell, then install the security screw on the bottom with the included screwdriver. Once installed, you can now add it to HomeKit. The doorbell actually has NFC built in, so you can just tap you know, your compatible iPhone to the front of the doorbell to begin the pairing process. Choose the room you wanna place it in, rename it if you want. Then you can choose your streaming and recording settings. These can all be changed anytime later, so you know don't stress out too much about that. Choose who can view the camera stream and recordings from your house. Turn on or off facial recognition and choose who in the house can have access to the familiar faces from your photos library. We'll talk more about this in just a second. You can then choose if the HomePods and Siri enabled accessories will play a sound when the doorbell is pressed and you can turn on or off your physical doorbell chime right here. And that's it. Really the setup was pretty easy. So once it is all set up in HomeKit, you can access your camera in the Home app. It also exposes the motion sensor to HomeKit, so you can use that separately for automations and things like that if you want. The doorbell does feature two-way communication as you would expect with the doorbell camera. As with any HomeKit secure video camera, assuming you have a supported iCloud Plus plan, you get separate recording options for home and away, including people, animals, vehicle, and package detection, and the ability to record audio or not. You also have facial recognition, which can use familiar faces already tagged in your Photos app, or the ability to tag new faces seen by your doorbell. You can create activity zones and choose to turn on or off the camera status light that shows when the camera is recording. When viewing your past footage, you see a timeline across the bottom with icons showing if it was a package, an animal, person, or a vehicle. You can also see names for recognized faces. Across the top, you can jump to different days. Again, HomeKit Secure Video supports up to 10 days of recording. To save your footage to your phone or share it with others, just tap the share button, select a clip, then tap next. When someone presses the doorbell, you can get notifications on all of your Apple devices, including your Apple Watch, your Apple TV, and the HomePods. What's probably most relevant to you if you're considering buying something like this is how well all this actually works in real life. So first of all, notifications. You can see some footage right here showing you the real-time response of the notifications with you know no editing. Now, this will largely be affected by your current connection and signal strength so when I'm on my Wi-Fi network you can see the notifications are pretty quick and the live stream actually opens up pretty quick too which is all good that's what you want to see with something like a video doorbell when I turn off my Wi-Fi and rely on cellular it does slow down quite a bit now I do not have a good cellular connection here at all you can see I only have two bars on an LTE connection so of course you know, you can't really expect great speeds with that. In fact, I'm kind of even surprised I'm able to get the live stream up and running at all with that type of connection. But I'm sure if you had full bars or a 5G connection, you know, it would probably run a little bit smoother and hopefully a little bit faster. The notifications on the watch were good. I really like this. A little bit slower than on the iPhone, but I love that I get the snapshot of who's at the door in the notification. I can even open it and start a two-way communication or scroll down and control one of the nearby HomeKit accessories like my smart door lock. So that's pretty awesome. Notifications on the Apple TV always seem to come in pretty fast. Your Apple TV does need to be on in order to get the pop-up. And lastly, notifications on the HomePod are awesome. You can choose which HomePods will chime when the doorbell is rang if you want to. And if you have facial recognition turned on, they will even announce who's at the door if it's a recognized face. It looks like Shane Woodley is at the door. 
I found that those announcements don't always come in like I'd want them to. I only assume that's because it probably takes a short amount of time to process the information you know, on your HomeKit hub to determine who's at the door. And if it doesn't happen fast enough, the HomePod will just kind of skip that step. So it will always chime right away immediately when you press the doorbell, but sometimes you know, you might not get that facial recognition announcement. And I noticed that because it will tell you on, you know, your iPhone notification, who is at the door, if it recognizes the face, but sometimes it'll miss that on the HomePod. Just something I experienced. I found the two-way audio to work well. The speaker on the doorbell is very good. And um, to me, you could really hear very clearly and easily when you're standing at the door. In my opinion, I do think the speaker is louder and a little more clear, easier to hear than that on the circle view doorbell camera. Now, personally, I'm sort of torn regarding the camera lens and the quality and all that. I'm not super thrilled about the distortion that you get with that really wide 178 degree lens. But at the same time, in actual use, I found it quite practical because I can see more of my porch. So anytime you have a really wide lens like that, you're going to have some sort of distortion, you know, usually around the edges, which isn't great. But I've actually found it quite practical because I can see more of my porch. I can actually see packages that are left right by the door that sometimes I would miss on the circle view doorbell because that one only has a 160 degree field of view. So as you can start to see, there are some pros and cons here to consider. I also found the image quality probably not as good um, as it is on the circle view. They both support HDR, which means you should get, you know, a good balance of like the bright and the dark spots on the camera. But as you can see here, the bright spots on the Wemo are a little bit overexposed and blown out. And often the dark spots are a little too dark, kind of making things hard to make out. A big difference between the Logitech circle view doorbell and the Wemo doorbell also is going to be the night vision. The circle view has something called color night vision, which is really nice. It can achieve this by basically shining a super bright light from the front of the doorbell at night. That is one thing that I really like about it. Although it can be a bit blinding for you know your guest walking up to the door, it does provide some really good clear night vision footage. And of course the Wemo does not have that feature. This camera uses you know infrared for its night vision as most cameras do. It works okay. You can see some of the sample footage here. This is with no porch lights on at all. Now, if you like to keep porch lights on all the time, or maybe you have automations to turn on your porch light when motion is detected, this might not be a huge factor. Um, if there is enough light, it won't need to use the infrared night vision and you'll still get a colored image like you do during the daytime. That's something that I do. So typically I really don't see any of the infrared footage at all since my porch light is pretty much always on, you know, when it's recording clips at night. Now, as we're discussing the Logitech Circle View doorbell camera and the new Wemo doorbell in this video, we've got to talk a little bit about the operating temperature. Many people have had issues with the Circle View doorbell overheating. Supposedly, there has been some firmware updates that have possibly fixed that issue. I can't really say for sure firsthand because, you know, as you can see, I have a fully covered porch that gets almost no direct sunlight on the doorbell. And that's you know really where people were having that issue when the doorbell was getting direct sunlight. Now, obviously I can't tell you how this one will do in extreme heat because it's January right now. So ask me again in July and I'll let you know if this thing overheats. But what I can say is that these two do have almost the same specs regarding their operating temperature. The difference is that Logitech clearly says, quote, in the shade when they list their operating temperature range. I didn't find Wemo saying anything like that in their specs, so hopefully there won't be any of those overheating issues. But of course, time will tell. And this does ship with a limited two-year warranty, so hopefully, you know, they'll take care of you if you do start having any issues, you know, like that that are obviously no fault of your own. Overall, I love having a video doorbell that supports HomeKit Secure Video. That goes for either one of these discussed here today. The notifications across all your Apple devices, the facial recognition, along with the 
package, animal, people, and vehicle recognition. All of that is just great. And so far, I've been very happy with the responsiveness of the Wemo video doorbell. I like that this one has the security screw, which is something that the Circle View does not have, which makes it much harder, you know, for somebody to steal. You can easily pop off the Circle View doorbell with just a paper clip in seconds if you, you know, if you knew what you're doing. The overall build quality of the Wemo doorbell is great, and the installation was very easy. I really like that it works exclusively with HomeKit Secure Video, same as the Logitech Circle View uh, doorbell. That means that there are no other apps or no settings you have to mess with. Just HomeKit, just the Home app, which makes it very easy to get up and running. Again, you do have to have a HomeKit hub and an iCloud Plus plan to use it with HomeKit Secure Video and get those features, including the 10-day recording. I think where the Wemo video doorbell falls a little short is the image quality. I do think the image is better on the Logitech doorbell and the night vision is definitely better too. But, and this is a big but, the Wemo sort of makes up for that lower image quality with that very wide 178 degree field of view. Again, the distortion you get because of that wide lens is not great, but I found it actually a little more practical as a doorbell camera in my specific case because now I can see packages left by my door that before I actually couldn't see. Plus, like I said, I usually have a front porch light on at night, so I don't really have to rely on that infrared night vision very much anyways. There are certainly some pros and cons here with the Wemo and with the Circle View video doorbell cameras. So I just recommend, you know, looking at your setup and determine what's gonna be the best option for you based on what we know about the two. And one good thing is that they both work exclusively with HomeKit Secure Video, so you know exactly what you're gonna get in terms of you know the features on both of them. They're essentially exactly the same in that regard. I'm planning on leaving this one up for a while on my porch. I'll keep using it and testing it even further. We'll get it through the summer and see how it does in that extreme heat and humidity that we get here uh, down here in the south. If there's anything I left out or you have any remaining questions about this doorbell, feel free to drop those questions down below in the comments and I'll do my best to, uh, to respond. I hope this video helped and answered any questions you might have. If so, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for new HomeKit videos every Sunday. I've got some related videos linked down in the description also and a few right here on screen you might wanna check out if you like this one. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.